Android getting the big probe from 36 states uh, going after Android for its abuses as a platform. Pat, I, I, I'm, I'm at a little bit of a loss that, that Android would be the first, uh, the first to have to experience this uh, particular undressing. Well, the great thing is that, that you're not, right? The first company to experience this was Apple. Uh, with its app store and if you've been paying attention at all to to the what's going on at the federal level uh, and also at different countries with regards to apple and the app store it's very similar right uh, it's about how much power google has with android related to its um its developers right and how much it it charges and i and i think what really raised the ire was this requirement for Android developers uh, to to provide uh, a Google uh, checkout, okay, as a as a mandatory. Now, now, unlike Apple, you could have the other option of having your own checkout, but uh, there was a mandatory uh, piece in there that said you had to at least give people the ability to check out with Google Pay, uh, wherever Google Pay uh, was offered, and I think. That's what's going on, and and you know as a backdrop, I, I will say that that Android uh, versus iOS is really different, right? Android and Google do allow you to sideload uh, applications, uh, which Apple does not. Uh, Apple charges most people thirty uh, percent. Google, uh, Apple does provide the smaller uh, vendors fifteen percent. Uh, and, and Google is, is similar in that it offers 15 to 30 percent uh, as well. Uh, but what Android used to offer that it's trying to push on people right now is, is that you have to have an option. So there's still a zero percent option if the customers would choose uh, to use, let's say, um, Epic Games uh, a checkout. So. It is very different, but no, getting 36 states on your back is really a precursor, I think, to getting uh, the entire federal government uh, on your case. I mean, Google's already being probed, and I forget whether it's the Department of Justice or the FTC. They're, they're kind of taking uh, uh, kind of taking turns on big tech. But uh, anyways, uh We'll have to see where this goes. And, you know, Google has more lawyers likely than those 36 states. Uh, it has a lot of money uh, to wait uh, this out. But, you know, I really think what raised the ire was uh, all of the investigation into uh, Apple. Yeah, I think as a whole, um, and when I said, you know, first, what I really meant is they're the first that's really getting the, the, the full public suit brought against. The probes are going on but the suit being raised by the 36 states. And I guess what was really interesting to me was how would a suit be raised on one and not the other? Because it's very clear that the bad behavior that they're suggesting is being done on both sides. And argu arguably, when it comes to Apple, you have no side loading option. You cannot stand on your own. You cannot have an app loaded onto your iPhone that does not go through the store. Um, you know, the way with Android you can, and of course there's security risks and vulnerabilities. There's, uh, you know, quality control that cannot be managed when you do it that way. But it, it's a very interesting, um, you know, impasse between the companies. The other thing, you know, that, that I would say is that, um, you know, I think this has a lot to do as well with the potential that Google has been trying to mitigate the little bit of competition it has. For instance, Samsung being one of the largest providers of Android based devices, there's an alleged, um, it was alleged that Google tried to basically sh stop or shutter or tell Samsung to stop having its own app store, just right. use the Android, the Play Store. That to me, I said, that was a very, uh, if that's true, and again, I can't say for sure if it is, but that was what was alleged. If that was true, I said, that to me is much more damning. You know, because here's my issue, Pat, and here's my thing with the whole antitrust thing, and, and we'll talk about this a little more when we talk about Biden's executive orders. What is innovation worth to the market, and should a company be able to profit for being successful 
for being innovative and developing solutions that people use. I mean, the challenge is, yes, it's a two horse race. You're either on Android or Apple. That's where we're at right now. Could another company enter the fray? Maybe, maybe Microsoft. That would be the only one that I would say has a chance to potentially play here. Um, but should it be free? You know, what, what percentage is fair? Um, you've built an ecosystem. So if you're a developer, right, you know, and this is a lot like the issue with Amazon. Like if you're a, a reseller, Amazon gives you a platform. You can start a business and start selling tomorrow. Be, be searchable, be findable, do your commerce, make money. They take a piece of it. If you wanted to launch your own website, start your own store, uh, sell your own products, do your own warehousing, do your own distribute, all the things, the value adds that Amazon does, well, this is kind of the same thing with software through these Play stores and through the Apple stores. These companies can become instantly rele relevant, searchable, findable, and successful and used because if you couldn't use them on these devices, these products would never survive. So the balance here is that these companies aren't entirely villains. Do they need to be managed better? That's what we need to look at. Do we want to shut these things down? Heck no. It would ruin everything. So there's, there's a lot to explore here, Pat. Uh, I think we should come back to this one, talk more about it. It looks like you want to you want to you want to you want to circle back the wagons on this one. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you you brought up some great points, Daniel. And you know, it's funny just to put this in perspective for everybody. You know, I think the debate is you know closed market, free market. Um, and you know, are you a utility or not? Right. And, and then what does this mean to competition? Right. If there's not a lot of choices and you're forced to go through certain things, the theory is that competition goes down. One thing that does annoy me related to Apple, and I know we're talking about Google is, is that Apple really hasn't, isn't, won't even talk about how much it has invested in its store. Right for security, for storage, for hosting, for peering, uh, any of that stuff, because they don't want anybody to know how much money they make. Now, does Apple deserve credit for creating the concept of a closed uh, app store? I, I think they do. Then the question is, if they're not investing in it, they're not adding to it, and they're essentially squatting on it. Um, it you know, is that good for the market? Is that good for competition? I don't have the exact answers yet, you know, but I, I think I think we've we've put up we've posed the right questions. Yeah, that's, that's, I mean, that's my only follow up here. Yeah, no, I think that's great, Pat. And like I said, I think we can come back to this. There's going to be more episodes talking about antitrust. This is the only thing on the planet that the two parties can seemingly have have some level of agreement on right now. 